to God be the glory. Amen and amen. I love each and every one of you. You all are absolutely amazing. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I believe I've done, uh, uh, what's it called? I've done uh, uh, an audio or a, 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 a word here. I've shared the word. Let me put it that way. Concerning the order of God in marriage. The order of God. And not just in marriage on its own. Also in ministry too. I want us to basically get it from this perspective, right? Because that's where we're seated in Christ Jesus. You know, right from the very beginning, if you look at it from the Garden of Eden, it's a place where you see the dimension of creation and how God brought things to what into existence, which is explained in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. So looking at that in itself, I want us to see this scripture in the book of first Timothy. It says here, it says here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of what? Full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the judgment as the devil. Can you see? He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he, may, he will not fall into disgrace and into devil's trap. So, you know, I have been sharing concerning the, uh, you know, a posture of leadership. And it's a place that I'm not just talking to sisters, I'm talking to men, but I'm going to go from sisters to men. And the reason why I'm going to start that is because of Ephesians 5 and 21. It says, submit yourselves to one another, because we know that in our identity as a son, you know, we are neither male nor female. So we thank God because in the spirit as a son, in this realm, God can use female to bring us into the knowledge of who we are in Christ. God can use a male to bring uh, us into the knowledge of Christ. But I've always shared at the same time that the way you're basically, your relationship is with God is how you're able to treat one another. Can you see that? Because what is going on in creation at this point in time is what? Is that trap called submission majority of the people you know this is where you're going to see a lot of people breaking away and the reason why they're breaking away is because of their lack of what submission they don't want to basically obey authorities they don't want to obey anybody they just want to do their own thing can you see in that dimension and i'm sharing this not to condemn anybody but i'm sharing this out of love because we have to understand that what the lord is basically helping us to achieve in this hour is the respect of authority. You can see how nations, people rise up against government that God has placed in position. They might be doing it to try to remove the government from position. But God is saying, I'm the one who established that government. And anyone who disobeys the government is what? Is rebelling against God. Romans and chapter 13. So this is the reason, you know, because the Bible tells us, I believe in the book of uh, in the book of First Peter and Romans 13, that if you disobey them, you know, you can put yourself in trouble because they are there to deal with whoever is not in obedience to what the government is instituting. So we understand that it's not everything that the government gets right. No, not at all. But you have to honor the government. And the reason why I said you have to honor them is because in Exodus, the father told us that I am the one who puts Pharaoh in position. So it's not basically that, hey, I decided to vote for that person. I decided to vote. Sometimes that can be the case that people make their own choice when God has already ordained. This is the person I want. Yes. You remember with Saul and David and the father, he said, I want to be God over Israel. But no, they wanted, they wanted Saul. So you can see majority of the time. The Lord is sometimes calling that man and calling that woman into authority with him, but rather they want a Saul over their lives. And there is already a condition in which Saul is going to manifest. And he says, if you don't, oh, you know, this is what Saul is going to require of you. This is what Saul is going to require of you. And because majority of the people don't want to be obedient to God, they rather choose Saul. Can you see how delays can happen? 
because you don't want to submit that's the reason why eventually Saul comes in and then begins to what to move in a dimension that is not of the will of the father we thank God that Saul started right but he did not end right so you can begin to see that whatever it is that you're doing might look good right from the very beginning but it can eventually be something else that is not what is not worthy of the Lord so I want to speak this concerning ministry too and the reason why is because I was sharing this and helping us to understand that the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his, to his wife. So you can see an overseer most of the time can be a female too. And the same is, you know, is to be above reproach, faithful to the husband, temperate, self-control, respectable. So this is the reason why I was talking about submission and why people are going to be breaking away in this hour. But we are speaking the mercy of God. Why? Because people don't want to listen to instructions. They want to, they don't want to obey authority. They don't want to do what the Lord is basically instructing them to do. So rather they break away from that path. So now, this is what I'm helping us to understand, that this is not the will of the Father right from the very beginning. Can we go to Genesis and chapter 3? This is what led to the fall of Adam right from the very beginning, because through Eve, Adam fell. Can you see that? God gave instruction. Adam relayed that instruction to Eve because we can see that that conversation ensued between him and what? And Satan. That the Lord said, but yet she listened to what? The devil. So you can begin to see from that dimension, Adam followed suit and eventually they both left the garden. So this is where you begin to understand it, right? That in the issue of that in itself is submission. Hey, my husband has told me this. You know, I believe I have to stand with him. My leader has told me this. I believe I have to stand with what? The father has told me this. I believe I need to be intentional with what the Lord is speaking. And in that regard, yes, I'm able to come into what? Into subjection of what God is speaking concerning my life. So you can see, because it's not happening with women alone. It's going to happen with men too, who are not willing to obey the voice of the Lord. And you will begin to see them break away. They're going to begin to what? Walk in their depraved minds. Whatever it is, you know, God is saying this. This is what I've been sharing, that God is speaking, hey, this is what I'm doing. But a lot of people are speaking peace, 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 peace. And God is saying, hey, I'm going to have to deal with that because that is not what I'm here to bring because people are disobedient to what I am saying. So now you can understand that God is just and he doesn't change. We read that in the book of Malachi. He's God yesterday, today, and forever. I do not change, saith the Lord. So we have to begin to understand that even for those, you know, you're working in ministry, whatever ministry God has given you. So let's look at it in the dimension of our sisters, for example. Your husband, maybe he has a business. You have been called to ministry. Now we understand that, hey, in the jurisdiction of the ministry, your husband, maybe he might not have that authority in the spirit, but as a husband, he has authority. Can you see that dimension? So when it comes to correcting you or whatever it is, he might not have that jurisdiction. So God will have to probably send somebody who is, you know, who has that jurisdiction to basically correct. But as a wife, the husband has that jurisdiction. Can you see that? So you can see that no matter how much a wife is saying, I'm going into ministry, the Lord has called me into ministry, but you are not submitted to what your husband is speaking to you. You cannot go into that ministry. No, not at all. Because the Bible tells us categorically, you know, I have been speaking concerning, you see these people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. Why? Because he says, I write my laws upon their heart and in their mind so why is their heart far away because they refuse to obey the word of the lord in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word is god the word is god so you cannot pick and choose the word to basically question what it is you're doing you have to honor the father that's why jesus said they do not honor me because they don't honor the word so you can see, if you are not able to manage your own family as a wife, that means to submit to your husband, to respect him, to obey what he's telling you to do. How, can, how are you able to take care of the people that God has placed under you? Because they have to see. Can you see what he says? He says in verse 7, you must also have a good reputation with outsiders. So if you're not able, you know, you're there. 
you're saying, hey, you know, uh, you're respectful to everybody outside, but the way you treat your husband at home is not right. The way you treat your wife at home is not right. The way you treat your children at home is not right. And yet you want to take care of God's people. How can God basically put you, put you in charge when he knows that you're going to mess them up rather than bring healing to them? Do you know that how you treat each other at home is how people are going to view and like, wow, you know, this is a submissive wife. This is a submissive husband. This is this children. They are submissive because your children, your marriage, everything about you brings light to those around you. So you can see. So whether you're a wife or you're a husband, if you're not able to take care of your own family, if you're not able to honor your wife, if you're not able to respect your husband, if you're not able to obey your husband, can I put this in this dimension? A lot of people out there, you know, you will listen when your husband tells you things, right? And your husband is saying, I need you to do this. You reject his counsel. You don't want to listen to him because you know why? Familiarity has brought about contempt. You're so familiar with that person that whatever he says, can you see that dimension? Is not, you're not ready to listen to that. I remember there was a dimension of somebody that I was with in times past. And it's like, you know, before, you know, the whole union came to be, you know, if I would say this is what the Lord is speaking. They will honor it. You know, yeah, that, you know, I take it as the Lord. I take it as the Lord. But immediately the marriage basically went into, into full blast. Immediately you speak the word of the Lord. That is not the Lord. And they begin to fight the word. And the Lord will say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And through that in itself, the Lord brought about vindication because why? The word eventually came to pass. So it's a place where it's, you know, don't allow familiarity, whether you're in marriage or whether you're in ministry, don't allow it, you know, because sometimes the Lord always tests us with the people around us and how you treat them, you know, because some of us, you've missed the moment of your elevation, just of the way you treated that person. The Lord basically revealed the word. You refuse it. The Lord brought you something. You rejected it. The Lord basically instructed. You refused it. Why? Because you have, you do not look at the person according to the spirit. You're basically looking at the person according to the flesh. I've been there before. So it's not a place where you condemn in anybody. No, but the Lord had to bring that correction. And many years later, as soon as somebody brings a word, I take it to the Lord straight away. Is this you? Yes, Lord. Because you know why? The Bible says they did not reject you. It is me they rejected. God is saying, it is not you they rejected. It is God they are rejecting. So this is why I've shared many a time. This is what helped me to deal with rejection. Because I realized as soon as I speak the word, you know, I love the dimension of Luke chapter 4. Jesus spoke the word and went and sat down. So when he sat down, you know, the people began to look at him. Hey, you know, what is this person saying? Before the next minute, they took stones and they began to stone him. They wanted to stone him. They didn't stone him. So it's a place where, you know, whether you are in ministry, whether it's with your family, because people always say your family is the first ministry. No, it is not. We, we learned that with Jesus clearly. Your family is not your first ministry. <laughs> we always remember that. Your children, your wife, they are not your ministry. Nope, not at all. Can you see that dimension? Because sometimes for the will of the Lord to come to pass, because one person can be obstructing the other, the Lord will cause a separation so that the person can fulfill the will because both of them can delay one another in what God is speaking over their lives. Can you see that dimension? So it's a place. I want to speak, you know, to the brothers at the same time, you know, because if you're going into ministry, you have to what? Be able to honor the woman. You have to be able to respect the woman. You have to be what? Because the order that God has given is Christ, the man, the wife, and the children. Christ, the man, the wife and the children. The moment the woman breaks away from the man and say, I'm going to do this ministry on my own without the man, you have broken the order of God. Can you see that dimension? So coming back to the women, you know, if you basically say, hey, without the man, I'm just going to go into my ministry. You have broken the very order because the Bible declares Christ is the head of the husband. The husband is the head of the wife. You can see that dimension. Christ 
is the head of the man. And the man is the head of the what? Of the wife. So regardless, you know, because I, you know, I've, I've seen many a time when I was in, in the sanctuary, you know, I've, I've experienced this myself before where the Lord, you know, a pastor will give a word and the pastor will give a word and upon giving the word you know the wife the you know is it that the husband they both get home the husband and the wife and then you know the husband is trying to say no this this is what i believe the lord is saying you know not in the direction of that person and the wife will break away from the husband and say no 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 my pastor has said this my pastor has said this my pastor and then going against the going against the husband i've shared this before in the order of marriage that what if God basically comes in and he says, I want to bless this union. Now look at it. Now there is a moment of visitation in the lives of people. Remember, 1 Timothy 3 and 4. He must manage his own family well. She must manage her own family well and see that his or her children obey them. And what? He must do so in a manner worthy of what? Full respect. So now the Lord comes in and says, I want to bless this union. Their time has come. I want to bless them to lead them into the fullness of their marriage, in the fullness of their ministry, in the fullness of whatever I have called them to do. Now the hour has come. You've been hearing that word and Jesus is saying, now the encounter is about to happen. And he comes in, he sees the husband, He's in the Lord. He sees the wife. She's basically out of order. She's trying to rule over the husband. She's not listening to him. She's not being obedient to him. She's doing her own thing. You know, whatever she says, she just wants to do her own thing completely. You know, the husband says this. She doesn't want to listen. And eventually what happens? This is what happens. The Lord basically has to withdraw. And once he withdraws, he says, because I can't find order there. I cannot respect what is not in the order of God. You can't expect God to bless what is out of order in what he manifested. Because in Genesis, when that order was broken, it led them out of what? Of the world. It led them out of the Garden of Eden. This is what was declared in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2. It says that what? Therefore, a woman should learn in quiet and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority. Can you see? Over a man, she must be quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. So you can see, the one who was in full authority was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Why? Because she was not in full submission. So you can begin to understand it gradually. That, you know, it's a place of what the husband, you have to honor the woman. Can you see that? You have to honor and submit. The woman, you have to submit to the man. Whether you are a prophet, apostle, evangelist, overseer, whatever it is that the Lord has placed you in. If you do not submit to the person that the Lord has placed over you, he cannot bless what is out of order. Do you see that dimension? That is the reason in the book of Judges, they were out of order consistently, rebelling against God. And God had to deal with them again and again and again. That is why he was bringing Judges. He brought Deborah. He brought what? He brought, he brought Samson. He brought Gideon. So you can see the people he was bringing because the people were going out of order of the things of God, worshipping idols. But he had to what? He had to bring structure back to that, using leaders. So no matter where you are as a man in ministry, you have to honor that woman. Because I remember when I was, you know, if I needed to do something, if, you know, before in all things, when I was, when I needed to do something, the Lord would say, hey, you need to tell that person. You need to tell that person. You need to tell that person. I would tell them exactly this is what needs to be done. And eventually, you know, if the person didn't receive it, at least I have done what the Lord instructed. Do you see that dimension? Why? Because it was submission. So this is where you begin to understand it. Because, you know, whether the person basically disagree, you know, they don't agree or they disagree. Sometimes when they don't agree, the Lord will say, oh no, that in itself. So don't worry about it. I will what? I will retribute it in a different way. So you can understand that. And it was because of that that caused a whole lot of delays in my own ministry. When the Lord had to remove, then I started. 
So hence the reason why you see so much acceleration, releasing a word today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, because those were the things I should have done before. But because of the person who basically caused all of those delays was why now I have to do them in acceleration. Now you can see why many people have been delayed because the Lord is saying, I need to bless this, but I can't find submission there. I can't do it now. You know, I need to come and bless this. How many times have we missed encounters with God because we refuse to submit? We are submitted to God, but we are not submitted to leadership. We are submitted to God, but we are not submitted to the man that God has given you. We are submitted to God, but we are not submitted to the woman that the Lord has given you. Like I said, it's no condemnation. No matter how much you are in ministry, this is where I was helping a lot of us to understand that in the year that you're going into, there is a lot of planting that the Lord is doing. And for some people is to learn submission. So the reason why majority of you have not even entered into the ministry in fullness is because of submission. And the way you treat, according to 1 Timothy, the people that are around you. Can you see that? Because... He says that what? You must also have a good reputation. For some of you, God is trying to build reputation with outsiders, but you are not allowing that in itself. How you treat people, how you respond to people, how you basically discard people. You discard people like garments, not wanting to have anything to do with people. It's not right. We have to get our character in check with the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, according to Galatians 5, 22 to 23. It says in his word, and the fruit of the spirit, love, and the fruit of the spirit, joy, and the fruit of the spirit, patience, perseverance, humility. Do you see that dimension? This is what the Lord is trying to expose in you to bring you into the fullness of what he wants you to do. Because for some of you, you're going into nations. With the way you're behaving, you cannot stand before kings. You cannot stand before princes. You cannot stand before presidents. You cannot even stand before a congregation. Because that is not the attitude he's looking for in the presence of the people. Not condemning anyone. But I'm speaking this with absolute love. Because you're going to begin to see that breakaway happen because of lack of submission. People just don't want to submit anymore. They rather do their own thing. That is why they speak against the leaders. They do whatever they want to do. They break away. Do you see that dimension? So the father is basically, so that you would not fail the test, is the reason why he's encouraging for me to speak this to you. Because he loves you. He loves you so very much and he doesn't want you to miss it. Look at all the journey that you've been through only to get to the very end and miss it. God forbid. Can you see that dimension? I want to tell you that, you know, let's look at, I want to read this. I, I, so please, I'm not reading this over you, but I'm sharing this as an example for you to understand that when order was broken, somebody paid for it. When order, you've seen it in the Bible, that when order is broken, somebody pays for it. The Bible tells us, according to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 20, you can see this was the dimension that the, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was restored unto Israel. David did not do it the right way before because what happened? He was dancing. You know, he was basically there and he was dancing. You know, <laughs> can you see that dimension? He was dancing because the Ark had to go before. And what was he doing? He was before the Ark and he was dancing. And, you know, uh, one of the, the, the people, People basically touched the ark, he died, and the, the ark was in the house of Obedidam. And now he had to do it the right way. So you can see, it was not done right before. So now he had to do it the right, the right way. The ark went ahead. So he now began to what? He now began to dance with all of his might. Can you see that? He was, he was basically dancing with all of his might. So he was dancing, he was dancing, he was dancing, he was dancing. And then eventually upon him dancing, what did the Bible say? So if you read it in 2 Samuel chapter 6, it says here, it says in, in verse 4, with the ark of God on it, he said that what? And Ahio was walking in front of it. David and Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets, harps, lairs, timbrels, sinstrums, and cymbals. You see that every time the Lord basically tells of the ark, the ark has to go first. But somebody was before the ark. 
the presence of God had to go first, but he was in front of the presence of God. You see the order? And the anger of the Lord burned. <laughs> Can you see? Against who? He said, do not touch. That was what the instruction of the Lord says. He said, do not touch. So he touched the ark and eventually he basically died. God struck him. David was angry. So now what eventually happened? David decided because he heard. And when he heard, he went back. He got the ark. And now this time, they now began to dance. He was dancing. He was leading the procession. He was dancing before the Lord with all his might. And upon dancing in the book of uh, 2 Samuel 16, he says that what? Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. Can you see? He set the ark down. He had finished sacrificing. Then he went home. And then the, the wife came out. And she said, you know, how can the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servant or as any vulgar fellow would? And David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. And Michal, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. You can see how God had to deal with this woman because she was not in order. How can you speak against the anointed of God? Can you see that dimension? She doesn't understand what was happening. She didn't take it to the Lord to basically inquire. You know, she didn't do anything. She just spoke out of everything. And look at how God dealt with the situation. So you can begin to see. This is why I always encourage a lot of people. You see that submission in this hour? We need to learn. If you don't know how to, ask the Lord to teach you and he will. He's always willing. He wants to because you know why? Some of you are going to get married. Some of you might be so humble before you get married, but as soon as you get married, you just turn a whole different ball game. And this is what the Lord is trying to correct before you get married. That, hey, I can see the damage you're going to do to your ministry. I can see the damage you're going to do to your marriage. I can see the damage you can, you're going to do to your children. And I'm trying to correct this before you get into it. Because what I am asking of you is your submission. Because you cannot start that ministry until you learn submission. You cannot go into that marriage until you learn submission. For the husband, until you learn to submit to that woman until the, to the wife until you learn to submit to that man and in that submission when i see that you're able to then i release you into it how many ministries have come to an end because of lack of submission how many marriages have come to an end because of lack of submission how many of that in itself that the lord has ordained he blessed he glorified he magnified but because of the lack of submission it all came to an end Let's not be what? Ignorant of the devices of the wicked. Because the very thing God is trying to use to elevate you, the devil can come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and turn it against. And then eventually you realize before, you know, when it's too late. Wow, it was just an easy thing the Lord was asking of me. And look at how I messed it up. I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Because he loves you so very much and he doesn't want you to miss it. Can you see that dimension? Do you see Adam? You see Eve? Adam said, but Eve did not. <laughs> you can see that dimension. My pastor said, and your husband is saying, it's not your pastor that married you. It was your husband that married you. So your husband his, his word supersedes the word of that pastor. Because majority of the time, you know, it can be in a place. I, you know, it's, you know, you have to understand that dimension, right? I remember when I was in a ministry and every time, you know, I needed to do things. I remember, you know, uh, when the Lord was saying, Hey, you need to release this person into ministry. The Lord was saying, I needed to do it to release somebody into ministry. And I was under a leadership. I could have easily called the person and said, the Lord said, I need to release you into ministry. But no, do you know what I did? I went to the leader. I said, sorry, ma'am. The Lord is basically asking to, lead, to release this person into ministry. 
And the leader said to me, not yet. And do you know what? I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't go to say, because God said, you know, I, we need to. No, I surrendered to that. Because you know why? I wanted the blessing of that leader. I needed the blessing because the Lord is trying to create a good reputation. So eventually the Lord basically after a few days because that person was traveling and they needed to go and minister. It was important that the person be released. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and said, talk to your leader and tell them that I need this person released into the ministry. And I basically typed the word as the Lord gave it to me and the person said, okay, that's fine. And I was able to release, not going above, but being submissive to that. So I'm not going to say because I'm I, I, I'm an apostle or I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. No, <laughs> not because of that at all. Because the Lord sometimes could be testing. Are you going to honor your leader or are you just going to do your own thing? I had to honor the leader. Even when I was basically walking in the prophetic and I was basically under a pastor at that moment in time, every time I wanted to give a word, sir, the Lord gave me this word. Is it okay to share it with the people? Yes, that's fine. He gave the permission. No, I don't want you to. I went and sat down. Because majority of the time is what? It's a submission the Lord is looking at. Yes, there might be power to heal in that place. There might be things to do in that place. But the Lord is looking for what? Submission. The Lord can tell you, hey, I need you to bless this person. I, You know, sir, I'm asked to bless this person. Is that okay? Yes, okay. <laughs> I remember there was a day I wanted to give a prophetic word to a lady, you know. And as soon as I, I sat there, you know, I, was, I, I had almost began to give the word. I'm like, this is wrong. This is wrong. Immediately, I got up. I went to call the pastor. I said, pastor, the Lord has given me a word for this woman. But I'd rather you sit with me while I give her the word. Is that okay with you? He said, yes, that's fine. And he sat with me. And we gave the word together. So you can begin to see submission. Because this is what the Lord is looking for in the lives of so many people. Submit to one another. Out of the reverence. Out of reverence for who? For Christ. So if you're not able to submit to Christ, how can you submit to leadership? If you're not able to submit to Christ, how can you submit to your husband? If you're not able to submit to Christ, how can you submit or lead the people you cannot submit to the one person, but you want to teach other people how to submit to your ministry. It can be done. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. If you're not willing to sow submission, you're not going to reap submission. You can see that dimension because this is the breaking away that is happening in this hour. Many are going to begin to break away. But I pray that the Lord will keep your heart in a place of humility. I pray humility for you. I pray humility for you because the testings of your faith is coming through submission. If you're not able to submit, you can't get married yet. If you're not able to submit, you cannot start that ministry yet because majority of you, just like you are at the Red Sea, you're standing at the Red Sea and you're just waiting for a Moses to basically part it because sometimes God is not the one who's going to part it. He's going to instruct somebody to part it for you. Remember with Jesus. Jesus did not just come onto the scene and say, because I am God, I can start it straight away. He needed John the Baptist and order was in place. He needed John the Baptist. That is the reason why Elizabeth waited a while. You know, John came at the right time. Jesus came right after. John was already in the Jordan and Jesus came right through. The Lord said, the one I see, the spirit rest upon is the one, you know. And after baptizing, he said, he spoke. This is, you know, he basically, he affirmed Jesus. And then the father spoke and affirmed him. Order. Can you see that dimension? This is the order. It's not the wife basically standing above the husband. Because I am called into the ministry, you can't tell me what to do. Ha. Huh. I beseech you by the mercy of God. I beseech you. I beseech you. Because pride goes before destruction. Yes. I beseech you by the mercy of God. I beseech you. It says pride goes before destruction. That means pride can destroy everything that you've held on to. 
You might have built it up, but pride can basically destroy it all. A haughty spirit. Can you see that dimension? We need to be careful in this hour. I beseech you, brethren, that you stay humble. You stay humble and listen to instructions that the Lord is basically releasing to each and every one of you. He loves you so very much. Because one instruction, you're one instruction away from victory. You're one instruction away from passing the test. You're one instruction away from starting your ministry. You're one instruction away from starting your, from going into that marriage. You're one instruction away from beginning what the Lord has ordained for you. You're one instruction away. And the Lord is looking at your heart. Are you going to be obedient to what I'm instructing you to? Are you going to submit to my will? Or are you going to go on to do your own thing and continue? Continue to think that you are above reproach. That is what the Bible is telling us. That you are not above reproach. Because you know why? God correct. God correct. He's able to humble whoever he intends to humble. Because he is a loving father. He is a just God. He is a loving father. He loves you so very much. He honors who you are. And for the love that you are inside of him. That's the reason why. He's trying to get you into that place. Because it's a long time that you have been coming down this path. You have been journeying down this path. You have been walking down this path and he has said to you time and time again it is time, it is time and don't let that situation, that lack of submission delay the timing in which he has already ordained, ordained and spoken out of heaven. That it is time because it is time for you as a husband to what? To be submitted to your wife. It is you. It is time for you wife to be submitted to your husband. It is you for now Lord. Oh I just speak to those, even those who are waiting to get married and the Lord has shown you that this is your kingdom partner it is time for you to be submitted to one another i speak to those of you who are in businesses who are in jobs careers and your boss is with you your boss is there you don't want to submit to him and for those who are in countries where you're rebelling against leadership that the lord has put in authority it is high time you learn submission because it is the testing of your faith examine yourself if you are still in faith faith. God is a God of order. He is not going to break order because of you. No, not at all. There is a reason why he established the order. There is a reason because the order is a test. But no matter how much it is that you're walking in it, it's always a test. Are you going to do your own thing? Or is it, are you going to listen to the person I have placed above you? Or to the person that I've given to you? Or to the boss that I've given to you? To that leader that I've instructed to be with you? Can you see that dimension? Because this is the testing of your faith if anyone does not know how to manage his own family how can he take care of God's church a wife you cannot take care of your husband a husband you can't take care of your wife how can you take care of God's church you're going to divide it more than putting it together because they see that reputation. This person, look at the way she treats her husband. Look at that way he treats his wife. <sighs> Lord have mercy. 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 I just speak this with grace and with absolute love. Because this is the testing of your faith. And I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. Because I've been there before. Many opportunities. But the Lord showed me mercy. But look at the delays that it costs. It did cost. Because things, when you do them, they have consequences. The Lord is not going to speed it up because you decided to be disobedient. It is when you come back into alignment, the acceleration. He will tell you, this is what I tried to do for you last year. But now look at where you are now. I tried last year to speak to you concerning this. May we not learn it when it is too late. Do you see that? It's the man. It's the woman. Christ, the man and the woman. The moment the woman breaks away and says she wants to do things on her own, she has broken the order. And therefore, she's in what? In transgression. Because ruling over the husband 
is transgression. It is the Bible. Transgression is disobeying the word of God. Rebellion is knowing exactly God telling you to do something and you just outrightly don't want to do it. Can you see that? Transgression is disobeying the word. This is what the word says. For example, flee from sexual immorality, but you submitted to sexual immorality. That's showing transgression. But the Lord instructed you and say, I need you to walk today and you drove. That's rebellion. Do you see we saw? Wait for me. Don't touch any of those things until I get there. He rebelled. So the Lord is giving you instructions. That's why I was sharing the dimension of Exodus 23. There is an angel. God has created an angel. Exodus 23, I believe 23. And it says that what? If you rebel against him, it is not God. It is the angel who will not forgive your rebellion. That's what I was saying to you. Some of you, those angels have been assigned to you. This is why, this is why you say with Moses, he rebelled against the angel and he did not enter the promised land. So no matter how much you can say Christ has already died, Christ has forgiven. If God, you know, this is how you understand the dimension of your ministry. When God assigns such an angel to you, and that angel is for people who are basically obedient to the will of God. The, the very dimension of their work with God is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Those are the people that do not take the word of God for granted. They do not take the word of God for granted. It's not a place where they are compromising on the word of God. They have a level of consecration from other people. <laughs> do you see that? Because that's why Moses can speak. Today, God will do something different. The ground opened. He struck the water. He struck the what? The rock. Water came out. Bre bread was falling out of heaven. He stretched the rod. The sea parted. Can you see that dimension? But the moment God said, I need you to speak and he struck, hey, you're not going in because of that angel. <laughs> do you see that dimension? Because of that angel. It says he will not forgive. And this is what the Lord is encouraging majority of you in this hour. I pray that you will not miss it because of lack of submission. I pray. I know majority of you have been hurt by leadership. You've been hurt by leadership. You've been hurt by parents. You've been hurt by all of those things. I bless you with healing from the traumas of hurts from parents and leadership. And I bless you at the same time with, 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 with healing in that dimension. And I, I just speak the grace and the mercy of God for you to be submissive in that order. The Lord loves you. He loves you so very much. He doesn't want you to miss it. He doesn't want you to miss it. God bless you all. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.